So I went with VirtualBox or KVM. Hello and welcome to my vlog. I'm Sumant Vepa, a developer, a DevOps engineer, and an entrepreneur, and this is my story. Today is December 24th, 2020, Christmas Eve. And uh, I chose VirtualBox uh, for our desktop uh, virtualization uh, across all our developer laptops. This is slightly different from virtualization that we use on our servers. And I had a couple of choices and I thought uh, I'll explain my choices today. So we've been using a mixture of, uh, of virtualization solutions um, across our servers and our various laptops. We work in a highly heterogeneous environment where we are developing applications across uh, multiple clouds, um, desktop apps, mobile apps, as well as uh, uh, web apps. And um, our developers are fairly, uh, the group, uh, fairly, we are a fairly diverse group as developers. And we have um, a mixture of Mac OS, Windows, and uh, Linux laptops and desktops. Um, and our servers are all uh, uh, unique uh, Linux based servers, although we have a few um, uh, open BSD servers. The, um, we use virtualization very heavily and containers um, you know, a lot. So we decided to standardize on a certain uh, solution and we came up with the following uh, uh, standard, so to speak. On our servers, uh, we use uh, KVM as a virtualization solution. It's very reliable, it works, and it's quite fast. So, uh, and for the kind of use cases we put our, um, our um, um, VMs to, we don't need much interfacing with USB and other things, which so is really just web servers. So it made sense to go with uh, KVM, which is excellent for that. And on a server, the environment is quite predictable and KVM works excellently on both Ubuntu and on, uh, on uh, CentOS, which we are currently using. Uh, and so we went with that as our virtualization solutions. On the desktop, it's been slightly more varied. Um, we were using VirtualBox on uh, Windows and Mac OS and KVM on, for Linux desktops. And for laptops, that was the same solution. We went with um, with KVM for Linux laptops and uh, Mac VirtualBox for uh, uh, Mac OS and Windows. And today, we decided we're going to standardize on VirtualBox for all our uh, machines. We're using the free version of VirtualBox, GPL, uh, the GPL uh, uh, that comes under the GPL2 license. It comes with substantial restrictions, so you know um, that we, we understood that and we went with those with that uh, solution. Um, and the reason we went with VirtualBox today was because um, for, at least for the foreseeable future, uh, was because um, it's just easier to manage uh, for a developer. It's easier to set up, uh, particularly if you're using bridging. And if you're traveling with a laptop and you've got a virtual machine running on the laptop, you'd like the machine to come up and reconfigure itself to use a different interface or at least be able to manually reconfigure it to use a, uh, a different interface and do so without uh, causing trouble. And also when the developer is in an office and wants a wired connection and wants to connect to a gigabit Ethernet LAN, uh, or um, then uh, you can just use a LAN cable and the virtual, and virtual box will connect. Uh, so that just generally works. So the technique for doing this bridging, bridged VMs was, was fairly solid. I tried really hard um, uh, on Tuesday to get our virtual box, uh, sorry, our KVM set up uh, to work uh, in this, for this sort of uh, use case. And we couldn't get, get it to work on Linux with, uh, with um, with Ubuntu 20.04. And KVM is not really a solution on uh, Windows anyway. So we decided that we're gonna standardize on VirtualBox because it runs on all platforms, Mac OS, uh, Windows, and uh, Linux. So Mac OS, Intel only, it doesn't run on ARM. We don't have a solution for ARM yet. Uh, and we're looking at parallels uh, as a potential solution. We'll see uh, where that goes. Um, uh, for now, um, we have only one um, experimental um, a Mac Mini that we use to test out our ARM builds, so it's not a huge issue, uh, and we're not doing any virtualized development on it, so that's not a big deal. 
So that's the reason I went with VirtualBox. And I went ahead and uh, modified our, uh, our provisioning scripts to uh, get VirtualBox set up uh, in that way. Uh, still a few gotchas. Uh, firing up a VM is still a little bit of a manual process and we're working on automating that, but uh, we'll, we'll get that done. So that gets us pretty much ready for for kicking off a big project in the new year, which is uh, developing the simulation and uh, cloud motion tool. Uh, we'll talk about it in, a future, uh, in future videos. And that's my update for today. So I wish you a very Merry Christmas and uh, I'll talk to you soon.